think uh, the whole community should focus on learning what side chains are and why they matter to the evolution of the technology and the market. Maybe you can give us uh, your perspective and your uh, perspective and explanation uh, about what side chains are and why they matter to the ecosystem. Right. Um, so, firstly, a side chain is a is a kind of um, like any other blockchain, except that it doesn't have its own native currency. So it's a sort of second layer blockchain. So kind of, I mean, Lightning isn't really a blockchain, but people know about Lightning that it's a layer two to Bitcoin. So uh, a side chain is a kind of a different layer two to Bitcoin that is a whole chain. So Lightning is just moving transactions quickly, but a side chain has, um, you know, a more Bitcoin like structure, you have keys, you can cold store them, you have a wallet. It, it's much more Bitcoin familiar experience than a Lightning experience, which has a few differences. So, and it, and it can have different rules. Light, Lightning is a way to do things you can do on Bitcoin, but faster and cheaper. A sidechain can introduce new functionality where Lightning is restricted to only doing things that can already be done on Bitcoin, but to do them cheaper mm -hmm. or faster or something. So that's, there's a couple of differences. Um, and then because you can do new things on like, you know, on a, on a side chain, um, that, that has happened in practice. So the first version of elements, so, so Blockstream has a, a layer two side chain called liquid, which is for probably most interesting for traders and people who, you know, do arbitrage trading or do trading across different exchanges because they can then move coins and other assets between exchanges. So Tether, the uh, stable coin is also on Liquid and some other assets. So you can move those things from an exchange to your wallet or from your wallet to an exchange or from one exchange to another within a couple of minutes, where if you do that uh, on chain, it will be slower. Typically, I mean, on Bitcoin, that might take half an hour, an hour. And it, and it can be expensive as well, because uh, when things get busy, the prices go up, as we know. And Liquid is you know, cheaper. So it's minimum fee per byte or virtual byte is 0 0.1 Satoshis. And Bitcoins is one, so that, that's one factor. Plus then Bitcoin's fee rates are, are high, right? So priority fees now are like 200 or something. So generally a transaction on Liquid is gonna cost one or two cents and a transaction on Bitcoin is gonna cost tens of cents, maybe a bit more if you really wanna move it quickly. So now by way of, I mean, the use sort of user experience is very similar to using Bitcoin and you, know, you can download a smartphone wallet or a desktop wallet it works on a Ledger hardware wallet um, and you cut and paste addresses. You can cold store the addresses. You know, you can write them down on a crypto steal or something. You can deposit on the exchange by pasting an address or withdraw and so forth. So everything, everything feels similar, but it's just another chain with its own capacity. Uh, the two big differences about what happens on there. One is that there's confidential transactions. So all of the values are encrypted. So if you look in a block explorer, you can't see how much money's moving around. And the yeah. other thing it has is asset support. So it's, it, you know, the Bitcoin chain holds only Bitcoin other than sort of layer two type things. And uh, Liquid allows you to, allows people to issue assets. So any, anybody can issue an asset. The, for the asset to have value, you have to convince other people it has value and convince an exchange to list it but anybody could issue one just to, to test or play with. And so that's the other difference. And so if you look in the block explorer, you can see transactions, um, but you can't see how many coins and you can't see what type it is either. You can't see whether it's a you know, Bitcoin or a Tether or a Bitsy token or a bull Bitcoin Canadian dollar token. And there are more of them. There's a side shift token and um, more different assets. And, and lots of test assets. So you get some confidentiality and that's interesting. I think a lot of people are interested to see confidential transactions maybe arrive in Bitcoin in the future, but it's gonna complicate change and there are some uh, interesting debates and it's a bit larger, like the transactions are bigger. 
So you know, okay. people can try it out in a side chain and see if they like it, and then you know maybe it'll get improved over time, and maybe it'll come to Bitcoin one day. All right. For everyone who who wants to learn more about side chains, I did a twenty minute highly educational video on my channel. <laughs> you can go and check it out, and I highly suggest everyone in the in the ecosystem to study this topic because it's crucial to see how the market is going to evolve and Bitcoin's capabilities are evolving. So that is key in the in this space.